All right, so I hope you can hear me over the noise of the generator in the background. I think I have figured out how to set up the uh, generator charge. So this thing is set up for uh, off-grid use. There is no grid. What I've done is the uh, generator is connected to the grid input. So this is actually what you're seeing the input or the output from the uh, from the generator. Uh, as you can see, the the frequency and the voltage is fluctuating a little bit, but that is fine, and that is because the tolerance on this has been set up to deal with that. So if you look at our settings and the uh, grid setting, the cool thing is you can actually set this to, uh, to cater for a range of frequencies and voltages. Now mine is fairly, uh, fairly wide, 45 to 55, 185 to 265, and that seems to be uh, fine for the generator which I have, which is this old uh, old generator to show you. Right, so that generator is a pull start petrol generator. It's not particularly stable, but it does work. Anyway, so I initially started on the uh, the generator input, which is this guy here, but it didn't pick it up. Maybe I just didn't wait long enough. Moved it to the uh, the grid input, and now at least I can see what's happening, and I can set it a bit finer. So I would suggest the uh, the grid input for the generator seems to work. Now, other things you need to do is set up the gen port use. Um, although our gen is rated uh, for 6 kilowatts or 5 kilowatts, I think, 5.5. Uh, for now, I just set it to 2000 watt to see what that does. I'm not sure that makes a big difference. When I select the gen connect to grid input, I think what it actually did is it actually changed the... Um, this my good. It actually changed this. I had other settings in here and I selected the uh, that little tick box and it changed this to a much wider range. So I think that's what that does. So when you take gen connected to grid input it actually I think it adjusts your grid input uh, tolerances. Um, nothing else there. So I think that needs to be, that definitely helps if you've got that ticked. Not sure what, if that really still works, I haven't tested it. Um, something else you need to set is on your battery, if you want your battery to charge, you do need to set this. Right, so I'm currently on the grid. Uh, if I untick this grid charge, you'll see what happens it's going to stop charging so this will drop to next to nothing let's put the uh, grid charge back so let's go to battery setting grid charge and ticket now let's give it a second so with the generator it seems like you, you've got to wait a couple of seconds like for anything to take effect in your settings wise, even when you first connect, it's going to take like a minute before it starts stabilizing and picking up the grid. Right, so now it's charging the batteries, um, not by a huge amount. So the next thing to know is charging the batteries, this setting, this 15 amps, this seems to be the magic thing. If I, if I change this now to 10 amps, let's just have a look. It's currently on 0.7 kilowatt that it's charging. If I go back to battery setting grid charge, I make this, uh, let's make this, ah, not that. 
battery setting that one needs to go down to come on let's make it 10 amps let's make it 5 just for demonstration purposes all right now this kilowatts the charging will drop to quite a bit less so the battery setting seems to be at a at the this seems to be the kind of the overriding thing for battery is to uh, uh, set your charging amps All right. and since mine is a pull start not automatic uh, thing generator I'm not really using that but anyways 15 amps and we the seal will now start charging a bit better and we'll pick up that side as well all right, now what I haven't yet tested is the um, effect of um, this 2000 watt. I think that'll only get into effect once I start putting both power and uh, battery from uh, load and battery from the Jenny. I haven't tested that yet, but I think that's what that does. The um, grid setting okay there's nothing here we've done that okay the other thing you need to do to charge the battery is to make sure you've got a system work mode and you need to have your charge thing ticked and your time of use so right now it's just after seven in the morning we're in this time block if i take this off or even that guy off It'll stop charging. Let's give it a second. Or not? I wonder. System work mode. Ah, okay. Let's try that again. Okay, now it's disabled. I think I might have to untick the other bit. Let's try this one. See, it keeps it. Take that one off and that one off and save it. Okay. All right. So now it's dropping the charge on this. Okay, so you need to have your work mode set up as well. So time of use, in this case we're charging from the grid, which is actually my generator. Ticket, and give it a second to uh, make up its mind. Alright, so far so good. Okay, so to recap. To get your generator to charge, either especially an older generator, hook it up to the grid input because then you can monitor the, what the frequency and the voltage is doing. Uh, set your battery charge to, in this case, uh, the battery setting your amps and your grid charge. This seems to have a, a real effect. And set your system work mode to grid charge and the time of use. Exactly how effective this 2000 and this 2000 is, I haven't checked yet. Alright, so I hope that's useful.